This video introduces the spread of the Y-DNA haplogroup or 1B, one of the main paternal lineages that make up the current European population. R1B, also called RM343, is a Y-chromosome haplogroup. R1B and R1A are the major Y-DNA haplogroups that make up Europeans. This is the most frequent paternal lineage in Western Europe. R1B constitutes over 80% of the population in Ireland, the Scottish Highlands, Western Wales, the Atlantic coast of France, the Basque Country, and Catalonia. Outside Western Europe, relatively high R1B occurs in the Ural Mountains of Russia, the Caucasus, and Turkmenistan. R1B, the Western European population, is uniquely high in Nigeria, Niger, Chad, Cameroon, and parts of Sudan in Africa. In North Cameroon, which borders eastern Nigeria, its proportion is over 70% of the population. This episode will introduce the origin of R1B and the overall process of its spread. The detailed diffusion process of major subclades is introduced in a separate video. Thomas Alva Edison, House of Bourbon, House of Wet Tin, American journalist and writer Ernest Hemingway, actor Alec Baldwin, J.P. Morgan, Che Guevara, Abraham Lincoln, actor Kevin Costner, George Bush, are known as celebrities belonging to R1B. More detailed information on individuals belonging to R1B will be introduced through the shots video. The common ancestor of R1AM420 and R1BM343, R was an ancient North Eurasian who lived near Lake Baikal in present-day Russia. Examination of the 24,000-year-old remains of Malta in the lower Angara River near Lake Baikal confirmed the Y-DNA haplogroup R. They have derived from the CTM-168 of a minority group from Africa between 88,000 to 68,500 years ago. Haplogroup R is a branch of K2B. 45,400 to 44,300 years ago, the K2B P331, staying in South Asia or the Iranian Plateau, traveled across Central Asia to Lake Baikal in pursuit of prey. Others went to East Asia via Sundaland, a land in the Ice Age. Given that K2B was detected in China's Tianyuan Man, they may have traveled to the vicinity of Lake Baikal via East Asia. Q and R diverged from P1M45, believed to have formed near Lake Baikal. Part of the population belonging to paternal line R is to the west. And it is thought that our 1M173, a direct common ancestor of our 1A and our 1B, formed somewhere north of the Kazakh steppes between 28,200 to 22,800 years ago. Some of these have migrated toward the west and are significant members of Eastern Europe. Their haplogroup is our 1A. Please look at the video linked at the top right for the overall diffusion process of our 1A. Some are 1M173 migrate south of Central Asia or towards the Iranian plateau to form R1B. The birth of R1A and R1B was a very cool LGM, the last glacial maximum. Then, shall we follow the diffusion process of R1B through the map? When did the people belonging to R1B first come to Europe? They have already lived in Europe since the Paleolithic. Some of the remains from the Ripari Villabruna rock shelter in the Sisman Valley in northern Italy contain R1B1AL754. This is the oldest documented example of R1B found anywhere else. These remains belong to a man who lived around 12,300 BCE. This sample was an epigravation of the late Paleolithic. 95.8% of the admixture in this sample was found to be Western hunter gatherer. R1BL754 and R1BY127541 have been found in the remains of several men from the Iron Gates Mesolithic period, excavated on the border between Serbia and Romania. These bones were buried between 12000-8200 BCE. These individuals were found to have a Western hunter gatherer admixture of greater than 95%. Today, the remains of a Mesolithic man buried at the Zvezhniaki burial ground in Latvia have been identified as R1BY240021 and R1BFTA35755** asterisk, branches of R1BP297** asterisk and R1BM73. They also had a high percentage of Western hunter-gatherer admixture and very little ancient North Eurasian admixture. Between 9500 to 700 BCE, Men of the Mesolithic and Neolithic eras buried in today's Daryivka region of Ukraine also had SNPs belonging to the branch of R1BV88. 
R1B the 88 is a paternal lineage observed with high frequency in parts of Africa today. They had an ancient North Eurasian admixture of 30.6% and a Western hunter-gatherer admixture of 59.1% on average. From East hunter-gatherer buried in Samara, Russia, between 7200 to 6000 BCE, it was R1BY13202 belonging to the branch of R1BP297. Other areas where remains have been found with R1B branches older than 5000 BCE include El Strox in Spain, Smyadovo in Bulgaria, Sardinia, and the Bailburge Group in Central Europe. A subplate of R1BM269 was also found in Yamnaya culture. As we have seen above, it has been a long since people with R1B paternal lineage entered Europe. They have already lived in Europe since the late Paleolithic. Our 1BM343, first formed somewhere in northern Iran or southern Central Asia, is believed to have migrated to the Fertile Crescent for herding. It is hypothesized that about 10,500 years ago, they probably domesticated cattle with tribes with Y-DNA J2. Our 1B, a descendant of mammoth hunters who lived in the vast Siberian plains, began hunting other large game, such as bison and auroch, when the mammoth went extinct. Around 10,000 BCE, the game starts to decline as the population grows in the Fertile Crescent. Instead of aggressively hunting wild animals, they began domesticating aurochs, boars, and goats. Analysis of cattle DNA showed that today's living Bos Taurus came from a population of only about 80 aurochs. Evidence of domestication of cattle goes back to the pre-pottery Neolithic culture around 8500 BC. The oldest archaeological sites showing signs of livestock breeding are in the Fertile Crescent. The villages of Kayonu Tepesi in the southeastern part of Turkey and the town of Jada El Mogara in the northern part of Syria. These two villages are only 200 kilometers away. Pigs and cattle were raised in Kayonu Tepesi. This is where pigs were first domesticated. Genetic studies of emmer wheat suggest that it was first domesticated on the slopes of Mount Karacha near Kayonu. Jada El Mogara is also a pre pottery Neolithic settlement around 900 BC. The people who lived here mainly hunted gazelles but also killed aurochs and equids. Our 1B1P25 may have raised cattle with people of paternal line J2 somewhere between these two regions. Perhaps this is where the R1B lineage settled before the expansion, the original homeland of the R1B. The early R1B cattle herders must have been divided into at least three groups. One group is R1BM335. They appear to have remained in Anatolia. The M335 is an extremely rare branch today. They probably competed fiercely with other Neolithic populations of Anatolia. Also, herding was not very successful because of the lack of pasture in the mountainous environment. Another group is the R1BV88 branch. It is believed that some of the population belonging to R1B1P25 migrated to the Levant and formed it. This branch was formed in 15100 BC and the time to the most recent common ancestor, TMRCA, was F13200 BCE. Some of them went to Africa in search of new lands. Detailed information about this will be introduced in the following video. The third group is the R1BP297 branch. P297 was formed around 13600 BCE and TMRCA is 12300 BCE. This branch spread and became the direct ancestor of people with R1B who live in Europe and Central Asia today. Now, I will introduce the process of their spread through a map. R1BP297 migrated to the vast Pontic Caspian steppe. It was the perfect place to raise cattle. Before looking at the migration process of R1BP297, let's learn about the area's natural environment at the time. Until around 5200 to 1500 BCE, most of the people living in the steppes on the side of the Black Sea had no livestock at all. Instead, they depended on collecting nuts and wild plants, fishing, and hunting. They were gatherers. Almost all traces of their archaeological campsites are found in river valleys. The gallery forest formed along the river valley had shelter, shade, firewood, building materials, deer, aurochs, and wild boar. Fish make up an essential part of the diet. 
The more expansive river valleys, such as the Dnieper and Don rivers, were covered with caravan forests of varying sizes, reaching several kilometers wide. The steppe between the river valleys was inhabited only by wild horses, wild animals, and saiga antelopes and was forbidden to people. At the end of the last ice age, between 1400-12000 BCE, torrents from melting ice sheets in Siberia rushed into the basin of the Caspian Sea. At the end of the Ice Age, the Caspian Sea swelled into a vast inland sea called the Quilinian Sea. For about 2,000 years, the northern coastline reached the middle of the Volga River, limiting the east-west movement of people south of the Ural Mountains. The water level reached its highest level around 9000 BC and eventually flowed into the Black Sea through the lowlands of the Manic Coast north of the Caucasus Mountains. The Black Sea, which was below sea level then, is thus equal to the level of the Aegean Sea around 8000 BCE. This natural environment at the time divided the peoples of the Western and Eastern Urals into completely culturally different groups. Perhaps the words they used were other. The people of the East Urals continued a hunter-gatherer lifestyle. However, those who lived west of the Urals adopted cattle domesticated by those belonging to the R1BP297 branch from Anatolia. The group that arrived in the steppe before the R1BP297 branch, the ancestor of Europeans belonging to present-day R1B, was R1BV88. These groups later migrated to the Levant and Africa. As mentioned beginning part of this video, they first migrated to the middle of the Danube River in the present-day Serbia-Romanian border. The period was between 700 to 1500 BCE. Of the 15 remains unearthed in this area, 12 people with V88 and 3 with L754 were identified. R1B V88 has also been placed at the Ukraine Neolithic site in the middle of the Dnieper River. It is dated between 600 to 1500 BCE. All 12 remains examined were found to be R1B V88. Although not the direct ancestors of present day R1B Europeans. Their migration is associated with the spread of agriculture that began in the Fertile Crescent. These groups will likely have entered the steppe in herds of domesticated cattle. At the same time, on their route was the Kukutini Tripilia culture. People who belonged to this culture were pastoralists. The leading members of the Kukutini Tripilia culture were those belonging to the paternal lineage G2A. It seems clear that the R1B V88 group entered the steppe via the southern Carpartian mountain. The branches of R1BP297 to the Pontic Caspian steppe are M269 and M73. They initially stayed at the Pontic steppe between the North Caucasus and the Dnieper and Volga rivers. Since then, the M73 has made its way into Asia, and the M269 has spread to the west of Europe. M269 is closely related to the spread of ancient Indo-European languages. Linguists have established the Kurgan hypothesis and set the homeland of Proto-Indo-European as the Pontic-Caspian steppe. Horses are also believed to have been first domesticated in the steppe around the Don or Volga rivers around 4600 BCE. The people who domesticated horses were probably R1A, as R1BS were unlikely in the eastern steppe. It still needs to be made clear when and by which route our 1BM269 came to the steppe. This probably happened with the advent of the Dnieperdonets culture. This culture was the first genuinely Neolithic in the Pontic Caspian steppe. Between 5100 to 4300 BCE. However, the main paternal lineages of people in this culture were either R1A or I2A1B. Those belonging to the M269 most likely followed the migration path of the R1B V88, which first came to the steppe. The V88 would have served as a vanguard. Maybe they went across the Caucasus region. R1B269 was essential to the Yamnaya period between 3500 to 2500 BCE. They have probably lived in the area for more than a millennium. Mixed with the R1A peoples who were hunter-gatherers and herders. The close cultural contacts of the R1A and R1B peoples played a vital role in the birth of a common indigenous language called Proto-Indo-European. It also needs to be clarified how R1BM73 came to steppe. They may have migrated along the route of M269 or entered steppe via Turkmenistan. The first steps to enter the Balkans occurred between 4200 BC and 3900 BCE. 
they already owned a wagon. In their wagons, cattle herders made their way into the Balkans, destroying villages in eastern Romania and Bulgaria. This forced Danube farmers to migrate to the village of Cucutini Tripilian, east of the Carpathian Mountains, which created a population boom in the region. They migrated because of the colder winters due to climate change, and steppe shepherds needed milder pastures for their livestock. Danubian and Balkanic societies must have suffered from famine. The group that came to Old Europe was our 1AL23. They stayed in the Hungarian steppes for a long time. Their advance towards Greece was around 1800 BCE. The arrival of the R1BL51 in Central Europe is 2500 BCE. This was when gold and copper began to be mined. It would have been easier for those armed with new weapons made of bronze to conquer the West. The lineage that reached Central and Eastern Germany between 2800 BCE and 2300 BCE and influenced the Anetis culture is R1BL11 and they advance into Bell Beaker territory. It reached France and the Low Countries by 2200 BC, England in 2100 BC, and Ireland in 2000 BC. It entered Iberia in 1800 BC. The R1BL21 lineage played a vital role in this entry into the region. This paternal lineage is from P312. Around 2250 BC, L21 advanced into Iberia with DF27, another branch of P321. Another branch of the P312, the U152, spread out into the Italian peninsula in 1200 BCE. Around 1300 BCE, a bronze culture flourished around the Alps and became the foundation of Celtic culture. This is thanks to the abundance of metals in the region. It develops into the Urnfield expansion, the Hallstatt, and Latin cultures. These were members of the clade of R1BL152. Around the same time, the R1BS21, called U106, entered Scandinavia and probably contributed to the creation of the Nordic Bronze Age culture. They may have lived here with haplogroups I1, I2, and R1AZ284 for over a thousand years. R1BS21 corresponds to the Proto-German language of the Indo-European family tree. So far, we have investigated the diffusion process of the paternal line or 1B, which is currently a key member of Europeans. In the following video, we will introduce the detailed diffusion process for each branch. Please give thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications.